Here we are at the Gigabyte Suite for Computex 2019. This is the VIP showroom at a different location. So naturally, one would expect to see some VIP products. And that's what we've got right here, the Gigabyte Aero 15 OLED. So basically, this has a Samsung 4K AMO LED display inside running at 60 hertz. Now, naturally, my curiosity is sparked. Since I do have a 1000 FPS camera, I am able to run that and not only tell you guys the response times of the actual monitor itself, but also the input latency. Since this monitor is designed for creators, it isn't really pitched for gamers, it still is important to have those features. Me personally, as a gamer, I like to double down and use my computer for video editing or vice versa. I know a lot of people do. So let's quickly run those tests for you guys since I am on the showroom floor here, and then we will report back with the numbers basically in text and let you know if that's good or not. In terms of the specs, we're looking at 9th gen i7s and I'm told that an i9 variant will come of this. Now this is to be released at the end of June and it will feature an RTX 2060 as well as 2070 or 2080 or a 1660 Ti if you want to go in with the entry level choice. Now as for the bezel, it's 3mm thin, so very thin option and it does carry Wi-Fi 6 compatibility as well as having all your standard Thunderbolt support, USB 3 and also a UHS SD card reader for someone who actually wants to create. So that content created label is starting to fit the bill very well. Now basically with an OLED screen versus say a uh, IPS even or a TN panel, the colors are going to come out so vibrant on this particular PC. On top of that, they've also also got two models in the making, a gloss finish and also a matte finish. Me personally, I've always been a fan since the beginning of monitors of the gloss finish. There is the semi-gloss finish, which is somewhere in between, but you guys have to let us know in the comments section below, are you digging the matte finish or the gloss finish? I know a lot of people tend to side towards the matte, but me personally, I do love the gloss finish as it does let those colors, and especially with OLED, the colors shine through more vibrantly. Now also cooling down a laptop of 94 watt TDP is very important. So they've got seven intakes and four outtakes with five heat pipes designed over two fans with 71 blades. All this is coming in under two kilograms and 20 millimeters in total height with Nehemic 3D audio. And I'm told the battery life is pretty good too, supporting up to 5.5 hours of usage, of course, depending on how you use it. Now moving forward a notch here, we've got the model that's designed for both gamers and creators. So that means a different screen, a 1080p 144 Hertz IPS panel or a sharp, IGZO 240Hz display. Now, I do have the 1000 FPS camera, so what we're gonna do is quickly roll those tests and report back to you guys with the numbers. Basically to my eyes, the 240Hz display was a lot clearer and I do 100% with confidence say that the numbers from the 1000fps camera will show that. As for the input lag, that's going to be pretty interesting to see too, but I do believe again a 240Hz panel with pretty much the same hardware inside should show a difference in favour of the 240Hz panel. As for the specs, the Classic does step it down in going from 4K to 1080p, but it does carry those faster refresh rates. But naturally, it is coming in with a lower price point. It is already released to market. You do get an RTX 2060, 2070, or 2080, and a choice of those flavors. But of course, as you step it up from a 2060 to a 2080, for example, it will set you back more money. The TDP rating is pretty much the same as the OLED display. But another thing on top to mention is that the battery life's also good, but they are taking away the Wi-Fi 6, and it does have Wi-Fi 5 on this particular model. The differences between the killer NICs as well, you're going from a 2500 to a 2600 on the OLED display. And in terms of the calibrated displays themselves, X-Rite is already on top of that. So as soon as you get this laptop, it is ready to start editing photos or video because it has been calibrated. These are those same ones that I use in the studio when I'm doing monitor reviews to test if the displays are pretty much good from the get-go. So these have it automatically certified out of the box. In terms of pricing, you can expect these things to be pretty expensive, especially the OLED displays. I am told if you're in Australia, it's going to cost in excess of $3,000 for one of these laptops. But with that aside, guys, let us know in the description below what you think of the 1000 FPS testing here on the floor 
at Computex. And also, do you prefer the matte or gloss finish? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. But if you're enjoying this coverage, then be sure to hit that like button and hit that sub button, ring the bell. If you want to see the videos the moment they drop and the lights have turned out here, it is 6 p.m. I've got to get out of here. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.